Okay, so uh, we have done uh, the averages. The averages are average because they can tilt. In uh, one trade, uh, you can make hundred percent. In all other trades, you don't make any money. Like let's say ten trades, it looks like you made ten uh, percent on each trade. But that's a wrong figure because uh, it's just like coming from uh, one trade. So you look at uh, median. Median is nothing but where the midpoint is. <clears throat> at least fifty percent of the times, you are making that much money, more than that much uh, money, and fifty percent of the times you are losing than that much. So. Here you can go and do a median. Just a median. This is median of. Uh, what is? Wait, since step one, this particular number, or for anybody, I mean, you attempt whether it's right or wrong. You have to attempt, right? You are learning. It's not that I learned everything. I also learned the hard way. So, how do you read that number, which I highlighted in yellow? So most of the times, kind of median, like uh, so. If you take amount kind of peak value that you can see, uh, that sort. You have to simplify. Your kid won't understand. So if I have five values, so the midway value that you can say, like if I have one, two, three, four, four, uh, four, five, so mm. three would be my median. So that's yes. that's a half simplified, but I still will get confused. Okay. So the way I put it is, uh, whatever his name, his or her name is, dude. This one point zero one is nothing but fifty percent of the times you make more than one point zero one, and fifty percent of the time you make less than this number, right? That's how I uh, put that number. I read that number. Of course, in mathematical terms, it's a medium. But if I were to explain this kid, you do ten times, or if you play a game for zero one rupees, and five times you lose less than one point zero one. That's how I put it. Right? Then uh, we also uh, can uh, calculate how much maximum we won and how much maximum we lost. I will simply call them as max and min. So this is nothing but uh, max in dollar terms. So in particular, one month I made fourteen and a half dollars. That is July. The money that I invested in July has given me fourteen dollars in at the end of August. And I can also do the percentage. That is, and some month I made thirteen point eight percent. You can see which month it is. And I also can figure out where I lost, how much I lost maximum. So I lost twenty seven dollars in one month. Which month is that? If you can guess. Now obviously, it will be COVID month. This month, February or March. For the investment or for the trade that you have done in February, you lost twenty-seven dollars by exiting at March. The same thing you can convert that into percentages. Now, in uh, statistics, you also have a term called standard deviation, right? So that is this. I'll just put STD, which is standard deviation. There is nothing but STD dot P.
the standard deviation term is bit irritating and bit uh, intimidating if you don't know the math right and there is a bit of um, argument the argument comes in uh, how the in statistic terms you take the returns and you plot a distribution the distribution if you plot you will get some graph Uh, it may not be a graph like this it may be a graph of something else or something else so each graph shape has a name to it so the names would be normal distribution if the shape of this graph closely resembles then you call that as a normal distribution and if it uh, the shape is something else it is some other distribution you don't need to know all that even i don't need to know all that because i am not Uh, trying to become an expert in um, uh, either teaching the distributions or making the distributions i don't make money like that only uh, statistics professors or somebody makes money our uh, objective here is um, know the number and use it not become an expert right? so if you do an images you will get plethora i mean like lot of uh, shapes like this. so each shape is uniform distribution binomial poisson normal log normal we will beta gamma so there's no end to it but as i said i am not uh, trying to become uh, uh, this is normal right uh, trying to become an expert in this now the argument is the stocks are not normally distributed they are of some form because you can see the returns are all over the place if you just try graph of this uh, i think you have to arrange arrange them in one sequence and uh, draw a graph we will get a different graph uh, so and you can't tell uh, what uh, that graph is uh, shape is and uh, uh, i mean the shape something closely resembles to this so you can't tell it so it is definitely not normal yes we know that it is something else we also know that we are not interested what that something else is now assuming uh, we are only assuming the stocks are normally distributed So a normal distribution shape is something like this. So this uh, small, uh, uh, that round and uh, that one is called sigma, or standard deviation. That's how you uh, write it. You don't write standard deviation. You write that small uh, character, which is like round and uh, O plus something else. I, I don't know. You can tell me what uh, that letter looks like. Uh, right so now you have 1 2 3 like that 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 1 sigma is nothing but 68% that is 34% down and 34% up so you will get 68% coverage and 68 plus 13 plus 13 that is about 95% that is 2 sigma if you understand it it's okay if you don't understand it also is okay right just remember this one sigma and two sigma so here we'll just do one sigma why we are doing this suppose if i ask you what would be the returns in february because the month is not yet completed the month will complete after another 20 days and nifty can uh, this nifty bees uh, uh, where will that nifty bees will be where will it land just take a guess 
Hello. Yeah, after how many how many years? Five, maybe. Oh God! Sorry, there was a small uh, interconnect uh, internet uh, switchover in the last two minutes. Um, yeah, uh, the question that I was asking is where it will be. Uh, so the best answer for that is uh, nobody knows. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, neither you know nor uh, anybody else out there knows. If you really know it, you can become a millionaire overnight. Uh, right. So, but. That would be the best answer. Where is uh, where does Nifty end uh, in March 22? Uh, either it could be less than 181.81 or above it. Now, instead of saying above or below, we say in Sigma world. That is nothing but what is your average? Uh, this one plus one Sigma. On the upside, it can return 5.8% or on the downside, it can go down 3.52%. So this is my range for Nifty for March. It can do either of them in percentage terms. At 68% confidence level. So when I make a statement like uh, what will Nifty do in March? Oh, it can go up uh, by 5.8% or it can go down to 3.5%. So the range is in between 35 to 5.8%. And I am confident at 68%. That's what this 68% is. Now I also can make the same statement in a much wider range. So this is average plus two times. And average minus two times. Now, how do you translate this uh, uh, numbers in an understandable way? These two numbers, whatever I highlighted in the box. So if somebody can attempt, I will help them. Yeah, give it a try. Mm. Is it a worst case, best case scenario? It is not worst case. It is you are 95% confident. 
I mean, when you are answering. Oh, your confidence level is. Yeah, your uh, confidence is at ninety-five percent level. That you are giving a range of ten point four percent or minus eight percent. I mean, you can never be hundred percent confident because nobody knows. If you are hundred percent confident, then uh, you will become uh, millionaire overnight. I just said, not millionaire, millionaire overnight, but maybe millionaire in a year, even if you start with thousand rupees. Right, so that's how uh, the sigma or standard deviation simplified. I hope I simplified, but that's what the statement is. So when I, when somebody throws me these numbers, this is what we have uh, built it, and uh, it, it may look like complex, but it is simple. So if you go back and uh, watch the record again, you can see what all the formulas I typed, and I haven't typed any uh, rocket science formulas. They're all maybe simple, may not be simple, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, so that yellow highlighted box, if I have to tell uh, uh, in a little easier way, yes, I know that stocks are not normally distributed, but assuming they are normally distributed, I have a 95% confidence answer for you. In the month of March, Nifty can return in either uh, uh, up to 10.4 percent returns on the upside, or minus 8 percent, 8.17 percent on the downside. So it will be somewhere in between. And that is what my best answer is. Right? Does it make sense now? Yes. Yep. Yes. Now, uh, the next step is we also can draw a graph, right? So, a graph. Um, of this and sorry, I think. Uh, we'll just uh, delete uh, January 12 because it's of no use for us. So we started at February 12. And uh, we'll uh, draw a graph of this and this. Insert. So we'll get a graph like this. Right, so now all the numbers have uh, become a some picture. <laughs> you can see this, or you want me to uh, increase? No, this is good. You can see it, right? So, so how the hundred is become uh, three hundred and forty, or whatever the final number is. It gyrated. So it started at 100, then it went uh, uh, to 150, uh, and then it has become, uh, uh, it has fallen again. So it, it has gone to 133, and it is going up, up here, then down here, up here, down here. You become quite a bit, uh, quite a bit rich. It has become 243. Uh, and by the time you are planning to do a vacation or whatever, buy a car, your plans have become bad because COVID has come and your 243 has gone to 172. Right? And then again from 120, 172, it is up and down, up and down and it has gone all the way to some big number, which is 360. Now again, uh, the stupid Ukraine war has come, so it is gone down to 340. Right, so that, that's what is happening if uh, in the graph. I will leave this graph uh, into a, a paint and attach into um, that presentation. So I don't, uh, I will remove that uh, graph. 
So this graph is simply called equity curve in um, uh, financial world or mutual world or mutual fund world. Or this gives you a, a depiction of how our hundred has become uh, what the number today is. <clears throat> now this hundred, uh, if it is uh, going to three fifty in a straight fashion by adding two dollars every month like 100 and 204 i would be more than happy because it's a straight path unfortunately it is not straight path it is going up and down right so now we have to measure those ups and downs we are not interested in up but at least leisure let's measure the down So this is your MDD, maximum drawdown, uh, that is the term. Right? So the maximum drawdown is how much maximum money I had prior to this. Max money prior to this. You have to do a lock. into 100 divided by this number minus 100. Okay, now if you convert them into percentage terms, so the maximum that you had uh, before this was 360. I think so, um, right? At one point of time on uh, September 21st, uh, your 100 has gone up all the way to 360. And from then onwards, it started falling uh, and uh, reached um, 339 as of today. If you convert them into percentage terms, it is 5.8%. So this is the drawdown you are facing now. Like you are uh, uh, at one point of time you had seen your equity at 360 your balance your monthly balance end of the balance but now it has fallen to 339 rupees what it means is you are down by six percent 5.8 percent so you can now do that uh, could, could have, uh, as you're doing this uh, yeah. quick question what is the relevance of this uh, how is this going to help me the max drawdown or um, the minimum drawdown we are uh, measuring it. I will tell you the implications sure. in a few minutes. I mean, last, uh, first we are measuring it, then I will tell sure. what it means to you. Sure, thanks. Right, so now you just simply uh, gone and calculated all of this, and uh, we will just simply find that value. What is the maximum drawdown figure? 29. 29%. That means your uh, uh, 100 has become uh, 339, not in a straight fashion, but going through ups and downs. Yeah, 100 becomes 110, one month, then it drops to 105, then again it becomes 150, something like that. It's not a straight path, that 100 to 339. I would be more than happy if it is a straight path. But unfortunately, the world is not so. It will go through gyrations. And it has gyrated to a worst case somewhere, that is here, where I was rich, I had 100 rupees in bank here. Now I have gone through a drawdown of 29%. So suddenly it has become 71%. Somewhere here, I was rich and I had a, a 100 rupees in the bank and suddenly it has become uh, 80. Whereas here it has become 70. So the worst of all that, where uh, uh, at one point of time I was rich 
and then suddenly I become by poor by little bit. So here I am poor by 10%. Here I am poor by 20%. Somewhere else I might be poor by 5%. Where am I maximum poorest or minimum poorest, whatever is the correct word, is your maximum product. So in my 10 years journey, the maximum uh, poorest I was, was 29%. Now, what it means is, at least this is what has happened historically. It's a good number, right? So, uh, who will give you, uh, if 10 years back, if somebody, if you had uh, given 100 rupees to somebody, who will give back uh, 339 to you today? It's a good number. Uh, I mean, you compare that with all of your investments, putting in uh, real estate or putting in your jewelry or putting in your car or any. Uh, assets that you have in your house, uh, I don't think you would have achieved 339. Maybe you would have achieved, I don't know, but 339 is a good number. Uh, <coughs> and another advantage of this 339 is you pay only one time tax. If you want the 339 back into your account uh, as a cash now, you have to pay 10% tax on the 239 because you made $239. And then you get back something. Whereas if that 100 rupees you invested in a real estate and it is really worth 339 today, what all you have to pay to get back the 339? What all you have to do if you have to sell your real estate or apartment or house which is worth 339 today? Yeah, I mean, it's just a simple answer. I mean, you can answer. You can attempt to uh, answer. Sorry, Cora, I don't have a house to sell. <laughs> <laughs> On a lighter note. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is you have to call a broker. Uh, and the broker uh, will say, okay, this house may not be worth 339 or whatever. Okay, then you agree some number. Then the broker say, wait, uh, I'll find some buyers. So the buyers will keep coming to your house. They will also negotiate. And then they will say, oh, I don't have uh, 339 rupees. I have to go to the bank, you wait for two months. I have to apply for a loan and uh, you'll wait. And you will apply for a loan and uh, the 339 will come down to 330 because you will tell some story and you are also in emergency of the uh, money. And so you finally you will decide at 320 or 310. And then you will pay some registration tax or whatever the buyer, the seller will have to pay some property gain tax and the broker will come and ask you 1%. So you have to pay him 1%. So finally you may get uh, a much lesser number than that. Whereas here, all that you do is, uh, I don't know which brokerage platform you use. You say sell uh, at 339, maybe a little less. You will give a discount of 10 paisa to the new buyer, new seller, new buyer. So instead of 339.2, uh, you will sell it for 339 and uh, Zero will charge you 20 rupees broker, whatever. So you minus that. Uh, then the money will come into your bank by day after tomorrow. You pay 10% tax on it. Be done. So every all the transaction is done in two days. Whereas your real estate transaction takes six months, one year, or it doesn't happen at 339. So that's the difference between your real estate and uh, equities. Uh, so that is your uh, MDD, right? Uh, maximum drawdown. Now, whoever is asked that question, you can translate you know, why it is important or what does it mean for me? Or what does it mean for me? So you can translate that number for, uh, you can translate that yellow highlighted uh, uh, item for me. So the max I lose is max I've lost. Is At some point of time, 30. yeah, to gain yeah, that, that hundred rupees, yeah, uh, to three thirty rupees. Point of time, you had gone through a pain of twenty nine percent loss. Yeah, right. 
but it's still a, just a number kuda that's why in my head i'm not able to say is it good or bad it's a number but uh, you have to be prepared uh, so if you hit 29% in future right okay you know that uh, historically also i've seen 30% rodam so i'm prepared i'm not worried so now people are worried here right here you are already down 6 okay what yes I, don't worry for 6% because you have seen 30% in oh, the oh it's well within it's well within that okay well within okay. that historical number so there is nothing sure. here we get just a 6% rodam got it that okay. makes sense and then uh, 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 this is a little uh, 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 not a complex term something called uh, uh, how much time i am in draw right so i am just writing um, a small if else condition okay so i've done some if else condition i don't want to break your uh, heads or whatever just assume that i've written some formula uh, now i'm translating it for you what it means is uh, today is march 22 on september 21st i have seen my peak equity cup which was at 360 right that's what it is uh, the small formula that i have written uh yes that is what is true on september uh, 21st i have seen my bank balance as 360 and today it is 339 uh, which is less um, than what i had seen in uh, september so how many months it is from there to here it's about 150 days uh, now translate that into months now it's uh, round so you spent 5 months cursing yourself oh i should have booked my profit on 360 on september or oh, why i didn't book uh, now i am down to 339 so you are cursing your luck or somebody else uh, for 5 months in a row right that's what it means now if you just drag this <laughs> and uh, this is i eventually see here what happened is you cursed for 10 months uh, this period you are at 243 and then you never seen the 243 in your lifetime uh, for the next uh, 10 months so you, then you have seen 260 so you were cursing somebody for 10 months in a row here right so we will define that as recovery time so which is nothing but max of this so the maximum time you cost somebody where you haven't seen uh, the previous highest balance was 17 months uh, you can find where it is that 17 this is the place there will be a number of reasons we are not getting to uh, that why it took 17 months or whatever but that is what it is so on jan 15 you have seen your account balance at 168.63 and you have never seen that uh, back again till july 16th right here yes that's what it translates to so if somebody can read it for me 
the way that I would read is uh, on Jan 15th, I had seen my account balance for uh, at 168.63. And uh, I have never seen that number again for next 17 months uh, up to June 16th. And only in July 16th, I have seen that number again, uh, a higher number than that. Right? So that is uh, what the recovery time means. <laughs> Uh, then uh, you can also say uh, how much time you are in drawdown, right? So do you mean it is a 17 months time drawdown? Yes, time drawdown is 17 months. Yes, I mean that, that's what a simple word is. Or recovery time is 17 months. And then you also can say how much time I was always in drawdown. Right, so that is during your 120 months of investing journey, you are always in drawdown for 76 months. And you can calculate that percentage time in drawdown. which is 76 into 100 divided by how many months our investing journey or trading journey is 120 months. So what it means? 63% of the time it was indeed. 63% of the time you will be unhappy. Right? Unhappy because you are down from peak. Only 37% of the times you are happy. That means you are uh, seeing the peak. I mean, this month you were happy on September because you had seen your highest bank balance in the uh, bank balance. And then again, it has dropped down. And so you are unhappy. Whereas here you are happy. So the way uh, in simplistic terms is, uh, yeah, so 63% of the times you will be unhappy with yourself and 37% of the time you are happy. With that, I would ask you a question. And uh, we are done. Actually, uh, this is only the first portion. Uh, let me see where I have it. Okay, let me just. You have two choices choice of A and uh, choice of B. You can invest, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, the choice A gives you 10% uh, returns per annum. Choice B also gives 10% of returns. Choice A comes with 20% of the drawdown. Choice B comes with 5% of the drawdown. Whereas choice A comes with a drawdown duration or recovery time or time in drawdown is 6 months. Choice B is 2 years. Which is better? When max TD is lower, it is better in terms of investment. Which is better? Sorry, B or A? Uh, since max brought down for B is 5%, so I'll go with B. Yeah. So B. you prefer B, right? B. But I also can say, uh, who are, I think, uh, who is that? Comes with a terms and condition if it is for long-term investment. Yeah, but uh, you are like suffering and drawdown for two years. So why don't you make a choice of yeah? Both of them are safe, right? So you can argue. We can keep on arguing. Uh, nobody wins, uh, but we all go back saying, okay, you are right, I am right, you are right, I am right. Uh, we'll better fight and nobody will be right. Everybody will be watching. So it's a choice between your risk and reward profile. So... Yes, there is nothing wrong in choosing B because it's the same returns. There is nothing wrong in choosing A because it's the same returns. Now it comes down to your temperament. Oh, I can withstand 20% drawdown. So then go for A. Oh, I can't take 20% drawdown. Then go for B. Because, but another way of looking at it is, oh, I can't wait for two years of pain. Then go for A. 
but they comes with 20 percent drawdown so it's a choice like you have to evaluate what's your risk profile right and there is no right or wrong wrong answer nobody can tell what's your risk profile right so some uh, uh, humans falls into because of their nature they fall into bucket gate and because of their nature uh, somebody else nature they fall into bucket gate. and nothing is wrong uh, there is no right or wrong answer because it's you who has to answer the question honestly so uh, this uh, yeah i mean either a is good for you yeah it's up to you for somebody b, b will be a good choice which is fine so that's where your risk profile comes so if you are um, high risk then go for a if you are low risk go for b and if you are impatient go for a if you are patient go for b and that's what it is right now we'll just take uh, two minutes or uh, sorry five minutes and wind up uh, uh, the session even though it is not complete i will do it uh, and upload the video maybe even one or two folks join with me it will be a little interactive uh, but i don't want to bother uh, any more for the day so we will wind up uh, in uh, 10 minutes so if reena can share her screen